Hi, Dr. Paul Hader here. Today I wanted to share with you some of my spiritual experiences. You know, people keep asking me, you know, what kind of a spiritual experience have you had, man? Well, I've had way back when I first started meditating, I've had some really amazing, and, and these same medita meditations have brought about similar results down through the years, in fact, where I was, I remember one, where I was sitting on the beach in Monterey, California, and meditating there, and it was just the sound of the ocean, and uh, just the breeze on my face, and all of a sudden, I was every grain of sand, there was every molecule of the air, I was every molecule of the clouds, I was every molecule of the water, I was every molecule of the starfish, I was every molecule of the, of the fish running around in the ocean, I was everything. There was nothing that I wasn't. And I really un understood that we are this great oneness and this is all interconnected and we are one with everything. And there was a feeling of great bliss and peace and love and and that there was an all harmony everywhere and that there wasn't anything else. Yet even when one fish ate another fish, there was all one thing and it didn't one thing didn't stop and another began or it, there wasn't any ending of any kind. It was just one continuous long process of love and one thing transmuted into another that was very powerful I remember being a little kid and he's kind of standing by a tree and feeling uh, connected to the tree yeah it was, that was long before you know it was about 10 years old and and long before I did meditation, I could tell that there was something spiritual there, something special there, and I felt connected to nature in such a great way. You know, one time I had was sleeping, and this was right after my father died in 1988, and all of a sudden I woke up, I and mean, I was pure, purely awake. It's just like I am right now, and I was looking out at the foot of my bed, and, and there was my father standing there. And he was just looking at me and smiling, and uh, it was just the most wonderful thing. And at that point, I had really was in a state of missing my father, and uh, I had a lot of questions as to why he had passed. He had passed at, at the age of 57, you know, that of a stress heart attack, so... And I had a lot of questions as to why he was gone so early in my life. And then all of a sudden, I just knew, and he was just smiling. There was some kind of imparting of information from him to me that says, I'm all right, Paul. Everything is great, and everything is going to be great in your life, because i just gone to have a stress test uh, with the doctors, because I felt like somebody was sitting on my chest. And the uh, doctor said, no, you're strong as an ox. You're stronger than I am, but you have a little stress going on. And that's when um, I started actually doing a lot of work on teaching stress management and letting go of all that stress and just knowing that there was something special that my dad had given me. And I had a great friend who was an Ayurvedic practitioner and uh, sometimes, you know, great spiritual experiences don't come happen in the middle of meditation or in the middle of nature or something. Maybe sometimes they just come from people, you know. And there was a few words that were said. He said, you know what? Your dad gave you a great gift. And I, wow, it hit me right between the forehead. And I was like, wow, you're right. It was amazing. It was just it was a simple word, your dad gave you a great gift, but he was awaking me up to the fact that everybody has a process, everybody has this thing that happens, and it's all leading up to something else. You know, my dad 
the end of his church heart attack at 57, it was about me being able to give back to other people because I knew that and help people to deal with their stress. It's all of these dominoes in a, in a line that were supposed to create something else. And it was like, wow, really amazing. And in fact, that friend of mine was a Ayurvedic practitioner. He didn't really take care of himself well, and uh, he ended up dying of a heart attack, to tell you the truth. So that was another thing that he taught me, you know, we need to take care of our body also. We need to take care of this thing, not only distress, but also taking care of how we eat and all these different things too. And and also, the biggest thing with him was drinking water, you know. He didn't drink enough water. So it was very vitally important. And just a few days ago, I had this spiritual experience while sitting meditating. And I'm sitting there cross-legged in my big chair there. And all of a sudden... I could see myself. I was standing outside myself. I was looking in at myself. I could see just the way I was dressed. I had a um, a sports t-shirt on, some shorts on, and uh, I was sitting there meditating, and I could see myself. But there was nothing else around me. It was total you know, darkness around me, but there was no fear. It was just this overwhelming sense of love and peace and contentment and and I knew right then that all consciousness was not inside my brain for sure. Consciousness is out there everywhere because I'm looking in at me and I could see myself exactly as I was. And how could I see myself otherwise? And it was just an amazing experience, and it, these things are never too long, uh, long enough, you know. I mean, they, they could go on for hours, but they seem like they're just like that. And uh, I came out of that, it's like, wow, huge feeling of sense of peace and love and contentment and uh, understanding that this consciousness we have, this collective consciousness, is everywhere. It's all pervading. It's omnipotent, all knowing. And that was an amazing experience. <clears throat> I've also had some amazing experiences with some of the great avatars, too. And uh, Sai Baba has come to me many times. And he, one day I was kind of upset, uh, probably dwelling on too many things, and uh, all of a sudden I could see. I mean, it was just kind of shocked me. I could see Sai Baba just sitting at the end. There was kind of a railing, and we were watch, I'm watching TV down below, and the railing up there that moves to our bedroom. And he was kind of leaning over on the railing, and he was laughing and laughing and laughing. And he really, and I go, what? He was, he was telling me to lighten up. <laughs> Sai Baba has a great sense of humor, you know. Uh, he was telling me to lighten up, let go. And... And that was very important. I also had a great spiritual experience in the middle of uh, an ex a process where many years ago this person had uh, actually did a business transaction with me and I have never ever been sued or anything like that. And all of a sudden, they decided they wanted their money back. They were going to sue me and all this stuff. And I, wow. And I was just beside myself. I had a good lawyer friend. He's still a great friend now, uh, Godwin. And I said, wow, Godwin, I can't believe this is even happening, you know. And he said, oh, these people just try to take money from me. That's okay. Don't worry about it, Paul. And I went, it was just was obsessing in my mind, I'm obsessing in my mind, and and then all, it was like four or five days, and I'm, I, I was hardly, could hardly sleep at all, and then all of a sudden one night, it just quit, and it was like somebody, some special being had come and touched me and said, everything is going to be fine, Paul, and 
I knew it was one of the avatars. They touched me and said, everything will be fine. And at that point, all the stress, all the anxiety, all that just disappeared. And the next day, my lawyer called and said, they dropped the whole thing. It wasn't, I told you it was nothing to worry about. They were just uh, pull, yanking on your chain pole. And it, it was like, wow. Thank you, Sai Baba, Christ, Ramana, Mother, uh, Ama, Buddha. You know, we have so many spiritual experiences that happen every day to every one of us, but we don't even think about them as spiritual experiences, you know. We think about the particular ones like I've talked about at the beginning where you become everything or you, you see this great white light. That's pretty amazing. Another one I had was sitting in a chair here in my office and all of a sudden a great, in my meditation, a great white light came. And it was all pervading, all bliss, all love, all uh, joy, all expansive. It's, I can't even put it into words. I mean, it was just this elation. And I was in the middle of this elative bliss loving experience and it was so amazing I've never felt anything in this lifetime other than that experience and I'm sure that's what we will feel when we go to the other side of the veil sometimes we uh, forget how exciting and wonderful that will be when we go across that but we get so attached to this body you know and that was my small section of, I wouldn't call it time or space or anything. It were, there is no time or space. In fact, in that uh, meditation where I was looking at myself meditating, <laughs> I knew there was no time and no space. It was just that we are. And then all these things of time and space are put together so we can learn lessons along the way so we have some kind of linear progression otherwise we will be learning in and out through all these different lifetimes and there it would be hard for us until we become a very enlightened being but as we start to progress you know as our snail space moving along like a snail we need to have some kind of learning schedule process and that's what time and space is all about but these are just a smidgen of the few spiritual experiences I've had. Uh, they go on in infinitum. I, mean, I could go on forever, but uh, I hope you will do meditation and open yourself up to understanding the joy that lies within you. you know, I just had a lady call me the other day, and she was abused as a kid, and uh, all of her people in her family have disowned her, and... She felt like the world was going crazy, and I said, you need to do some meditation. All that joy is deep down inside of you, and all you have to do is connect to it. You know, we can start healing the brain at the same time. You know, there's a reason why we see the Army using uh, meditation for healing post-traumatic stress disorder. There's a reason why we're seeing, you know, uh, the uh, people who have post-traumatic stress disorder in, in the world that psychologists are using meditation to heal people. And also ADD and ADHD is it's powerful. And it actually heals the brain. And there is nothing, nothing else that does that. So I hope you will delve into yourself because, you, you know, a lot of us keep looking for answers out there. For the most part, once in a while, a friend would say something, and that would be interesting, but I didn't go looking for it. It came to me. <laughs> but it was an answer I was looking for inside that when the avatar said, well, well, let's bring him that. So they brought it to me. So I had to go looking inside in order to find that. If I didn't go inside to ask the question, it would not have come to me. So... Everything is inside. All we have to do is look there. Yeah, I have a young girl that she keeps looking for all the answers out there. 
and keep asking people, you know, about this or about that, and but she's afraid to go do a meditation workshop because she wants to know, but she doesn't want to know. But once we get to a certain point where we decide, ah, oh, there's no turning back. I want to know who I am in this lifetime. That's when we really go deep. And then we start having a smoother sailing life. Not that life doesn't have its huge up and downs all the time, but we don't go there up and down, up and down, up and down. We go this way through life. So if you want to get rid of the anxiety, if you want to get rid of all the craziness of the world, you want to have that great peace. Start meditating. Start looking inside. Start contemplating. Go out into nature, and you will find that peace. I guarantee it. And if you care to make a donation down below, that's great. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me and do a consultation, my Skype address, my email, and our phone number is down below. Also, uh, all my consultations are free, and we'd love to talk with you and help you in any way, shape, or form. And I love you.